Alrighty, well, as promised, I am making a series of videos for my Playcrafters class in Substance. Um, we are basically just going to go over the stuff that we did in the class and or didn't have time to get to in the class. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and import all the stuff that we need. Well, actually, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new substance. Um, right, so we're just going to call this substance. And, you know, all the stuff we discussed, this is going to be relative to parent. This is going to give us uh, options later. We're going to just go with what it normally gives us. Uh, it's going, we're going to let it give us these output nodes. It just saves time. We could make an empty graph and go ahead and put those in by hand, but we're not going to do that. So it's going to give us a bunch of output nodes. We can always add or subtract those later on. Um, again, I'm not going to go too deep into the interface. We're just going to touch on things in the interface as we go. I don't think it actually needs its own separate video. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to link some 3D meshes because we want to take stuff information from the high res mesh and put it onto the low res mesh because the low res mesh is what we're going to be using in game and you know you get all this you know details on your high res mesh but then it becomes too big to actually use it you know as you know in, in a game so here we imported it into a resources folder. I'm going to go ahead and get out ahead of this because it's just going to dump all the resources in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new folder to put in our meshes. And I can just drag and drop these guys in here. So this is our high res mesh. So this has got a lot of details. And as you can see, it takes a, a long time to load because it's big. but it has all these little knobs and all this other good stuff and we need to get this information onto this mesh which is the one that is actually suitable for being in game uh, so the way we're going to do that is we are going to click on our low res mesh so in other words you're, you're clicking on the mesh onto which you want to put the information going to right click on that and we're going to go to bake model information now as we learned in class the first time you've ever done this these will all this will be empty uh, you can add and subtract your choices from here uh, so if you want to take stuff away you click the X if you want to add stuff it gives you a wide selection of things to put in there what did we take off with the ambient occlusion Okay, so we're going to add that one back in. Now it's giving us this warning sign because um, the path to the last time I did this has changed. So it doesn't recognize the path and that's what we can enter in down here. So here we have a choice. If you do from file, that, that's from an external file, but we had just imported those uh, meshes into our resources folder so we can just go ahead and do this from resource. So now we're going to pick our high res mesh and all of a sudden these all went green so that's good um, you've got all kinds of parameters that you can input in here so you have uh, the size what UV quadrant you want um, if you prefer to have it your defaults bake out under a different name you can take care of all that stuff here and we're going to just go with the defaults and we're going to click OK uh, this may take a while let's pause it all right, and we're back. Um, so it's made this folder here, taking the name from the mesh, and we have all sorts of um, other maps in there too. Um, I had a bit of technical difficulty. I had to actually redo this. I so I'm not sure whether that was in here before, with which mesh was in there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop my low res mesh into that and I will now drag out my normal 
So we're going to see what this looks like. I'm going to hook this up. And there we go. The reason it did that was because the first time you need to uh, view outputs in 3D view. So the first time you you know you link that up, you got to right click and do that and then after that it'll link it up. So like I said, I had to redo this little section due to my being new to this video recorder. Okay, uh, so what we're now going to do is we are going to import, or rather link, I keep saying import, I shouldn't. We're going to link our Photoshop file. So again, it's looking for a bitmap. Um, this top layer here, uh, this is whatever you saved out your your PSD the last time. It's going to take what it looks like and it's going to turn it into like a reference PSD for the top. Each one of these, it each layer um, can be imported separately as a PSD. It's good practice to unclick all of these and then just click the ones you want, especially when your files get really big. And you know they're usually work in progress files, so you don't really want everything in there. It's important to remember that it's going to absolutely want this exact name once it imports it it's going to be looking for this in the link if you don't save things out with the exact same layer names uh, it's going to give you an error message I mean it can you can fix it but it, it's a drag so just that's why it's better to actually positively do it this way rather than just sort of blanket doing everything because this way when you change names for files that you're not really it, it Trust me. Um, so I didn't do this last one. I don't need it. That's my background. And I imported this in. Okay, so we already did that. Just want to make sure we touch that. Uh, yeah, I had to step away, so I'm coming back to this a little bit later. All right, so we've imported this stuff. It's named it after the PSD file that I imported it from, you can do this with multiple files. So you can have a whole bunch of different references in here. You can have, you know, from several different meshes in here, you can have several different PSDs, um, which is why it's always nice to try to keep things as organized as possible because it can get very busy in here. So first thing we're going to do, I think, is make it so this isn't so shiny because we're going to work on the normals and this is distracting. Um, easily done, we're just going to do a placeholder. We're going to rough it up a little bit. Now, we can either drag out a color this way, a uniform color, or again, and this is probably easier to start with, and then once you learn the colors of their various icons, you can kind of do both. I tend to do the right click anyway. It's just because I, I tend to right click. Um, if you do it with a right click and you go to add node, it'll actually spell out what each one is as opposed to relying on what the, um, what the little icons say. Also, this is the spot where you can change your parent size. So because I'm putting this into the roughness channel, this wants to be a grayscale channel. So again, I've got my node highlighted and here are my parameters for whatever node in particular.